This program is designed to describe the procedures for proper care and maintenance of transparent plastic enclosures in military, private, and business aircraft. Through this tape, we at Microsurface hope to help educate you in the practice of repairing aircraft transparencies. Microsurface personnel have written military specifications pertaining to window restorations and have worked with Boeing, Northrop, Cessna, Lockheed, and other aircraft manufacturers in developing their own rework specifications. We have conducted training sessions at military bases and have saved over $250,000 a year at one base alone by repairing windows and canopies rather than replacing them. As this tape will show, there are great economies to be realized by repairing, not replacing, transparencies that become damaged. Vision is so vital to aircraft pilots that proper day-to-day -day maintenance and care of viewport enclosures is absolutely essential. Proper repair methods should be utilized whenever enclosures are damaged by chemical or physical action. And every effort should be made to eliminate such damage in the course of servicing the aircraft. Plastic enclosures are particularly susceptible to damage during paint stripping and fuselage cleaning operations. Improper protection can cause severe chemical and optical window damage, resulting in reduced service life and degradation of optical properties. Functional fluids such as de-icing, hydraulic fluids, etc., fuselage cleaners and brighteners can also harm transparent enclosures. Both passenger and crew transparent enclosures must be replaced or repaired occasionally due to severe scratching, crazing, or solvent chemical damage caused by improper maintenance and exposure to unapproved cleaners and solvents. Scratches in acrylic enclosures serve as a nucleus for initiating crazing. Both conditions impair the transparency of window material. The use of unapproved cleaning procedures and cleaners is one of the most common causes of plastic enclosure crazing and chemical damage. Window cleaners, scratch removal compounds, and anti-static materials must be carefully selected to properly maintain viewing enclosures and extend their service life. Improper refurbishing methods can cause crazing and thermal relaxation and lead to short service life and possible window failure. The introduction of stretched acrylic late in the 1950s has greatly improved service life of transparent plastic enclosures. Unstretched or as-cast acrylic enclosures would rupture once crazing occurred. Small craze fissures can join up in a long straight scratch line and propagate into a crack resulting in in-flight rupture of the transparent enclosure. Stretched acrylic material has practically eliminated this type of rupture. Stretched acrylic crazing is usually shallow and does not propagate through the thickness of the material. Its laminar oriented molecular structure makes stretched acrylic material exceedingly tough, thus highly resistant to crack propagation through the plane of stretch. Crazing in stretched acrylic components is considered to be objectionable only from a quality and appearance viewpoint. It does not jeopardize the enclosure's structural integrity. Excessive scratches, abrasion, and crazing, rather than lack of structural integrity, are the reasons requiring removal of fuselage and cockpit enclosures fabricated from stretched acrylic material. The scratches in stretched acrylic are more noticeable than those in the as-cast or unstretched acrylic material. The scratches in stretched acrylic are much wider and tend to stress relieve themselves. The broadening of scratches may be attributed in some cases to the onset of incipient crazing in the scratch recess that propagates the craze fissure to the surface. All of these types of damage can be repaired. A micromesh restoration consists of two distinct steps. The first is damage removal. The second is restoration of optical clarity to the window. These two important steps take place in every micromesh restoral, but the length of time and the materials used will vary depending upon the size of the job. Micromesh is a series of cloth-backed cushioned abrasives in grits from number 1500 to 12,000. These abrasives produce very fine scratch patterns and have a very long life. The 
process of restoring a windshield is similar to sanding a piece of wood. You start with a coarse grit sandpaper and sand until the damage has been removed. Always remove damage with as fine an abrasive as possible. If it does not come off quickly, drop to a coarser grit until the damage has been removed. For some types of damage, it may be necessary to begin with one of the coarser grits of sandpaper or micromesh. For the type of damage shown here, we began with 2400 micromesh. The first step is to remove the damage. When this is done, clean the surface of the window and do a visual inspection to make sure all of the damage has been removed. From this point on, you will use finer and finer grits of micromesh. When polishing acrylics, it is extremely important that you remove each and every scratch from the previous grit when polishing with the next finer step. If you do not remove those scratches with the next finer step, they will still be there when the job is finished. Most micromesh kits pick up where 600 grit sandpaper stops. Following the 600 grit, we usually start with micromesh number 2400 and proceed down the series. The first order of business is to determine the type of damage that is being repaired. And the second step is to determine the appropriate starting point in either the sandpaper or micromesh series. It is important that you use the appropriate starting point for a variety of reasons. First, you want to use materials coarse enough to remove the damage as quickly and efficiently as possible without putting in a deeper scratch pattern than is necessary for proper restoral. Using too fine a grit will add to the length of time necessary to remove the damage, and using too coarse a grit will remove the damage quickly, but leave a very deep scratch pattern that must be removed with a finer grit, which lengthens the time for restoral. Always work in a crossing pattern to the previous step. This will be helpful when you check to see if a step has been completed. In this restoral, we are using an X pattern for one grit and a T pattern for the next one. To check and see if a step is done, clean off the surface and do a visual inspection, looking for any scratches going in the direction of the previous sanding step. If you detect scratches from the previous pattern, continue working until completely removed. If all previous scratches have been removed, then continue on to the next finer step. Use the foam block for every step. This helps prevent distortion and allows for good surface contact and an even rate of surface removal. Clean the work surface thoroughly between each step. All micromesh grits and some conventional sandpapers can be used either wet or dry. Dry sanding allows you to check your work surface frequently for proper damage and scratch removal, but your abrasives do not cut as quickly and have a tendency to trap abraded particles. Paint overspray is a frequent problem. Many times additional damage results as this overspray is removed with solvents and buffing compounds. Paint overspray is nothing more than surface damage and can be repaired quickly with a micromesh kit. Following the final micromesh grit, an anti-static cream should be used to dissipate the static charge that is developed while rubbing the window.
Now we can apply this type of thinking to a variety of problems which occur frequently with aircraft transparencies. We have broken most types of damage into three basic categories. Hairline scratches and paint overspray, very light scratches or haziness. Minor scratches, scuffs, readily detected with a fingernail. Deep scratches, crazing, easily felt with the fingertip or seen with proper lighting. After determining the type of damage, you need to find a starting point. See page 12 in the ATEC manual. For hairline scratches, start with 2400, 3200, or 3600 micromesh, depending upon the severity of the damage. For minor scratches, remove the damage with 600 grit, wet, or dry sandpaper. And for deep scratches or crazing, refer to pages 6 or 7 in the ATEC manual for an appropriate starting point, depending upon the thickness of your window. Crazing is a problem that every window will sustain at some point in its useful life, and is the largest restoration job. Crazing is a series of subsurface cracks caused by the acrylic material attempting to relieve the pressures caused during its formation or installation. Crazing is age-related, but is often hastened by constant prolonged exposure to the sun and or exposure to solvents or chemicals. Preparation before beginning to sand will save you time, prevent damage to window frames, and make your total job proceed easier with far better results. First, you should do a thorough visual inspection of the window to determine if there is any cause for rejection. Cracks, deep scratches, chips, and delaminations are common causes for rejection. Window thickness must also be checked to make sure there is enough material to meet thickness standards at the completion of the job. Thickness can be most easily measured using an ultrasonic thickness gauge. However, if one is not available, a standard rule placed at right angles to the surface of the enclosure works very well. Observe the rule's reflection and the shadow cast by the opposite side of the enclosure. Read the thickness from where the shadow falls on the reflected image. Use duct tape or an abrasive resistant tape to mask off the frame so you do not sand the frame or the paint. Tools required are a high-speed orbital sander, sheet abrasives cut to the correct sizes, micromesh kit, a source of fresh water, clean flannel, a grid board, adequate lighting, and a thickness gauge. Never work in direct sunlight and avoid excess surface temperatures. The most important part of a crazed window restoration is the complete removal of the crazing prior to the polishing steps. Craze removal requires sandpaper, time, and patience. Depending upon the severity of the crazing, the amount of surface material that must be removed will vary. A primary concern when removing craze damage is even surface removal. If the surface is not removed evenly, distortion will result. Refer to page 6 of the ATEC manual to determine the sandpaper grits that can be used on the window being repaired. It is recommended that the sandpaper chart listed on page 6 be followed closely. Do not use coarser sandpaper than the grit shown for the window thickness you are working on. You may want to start with sandpaper finer than the grit listed and see how quickly the damage is being removed. If the finer grit removes the material quickly enough, Continue working in a pattern that will assure an even surface removal over the entire window. 
If you do not feel that the finer grit is removing material quickly enough, drop to a coarser grit not exceeding the grit listed on the chart. This damage removal step is the most time consuming step in the whole restoral process and cannot be rushed. This step alone can account for 80% of the total time necessary to restore a window. However, there are no shortcuts in sanding and the successful completion of a distortion free job hinges on the even removal of all of the damage with sandpaper prior to the micro mesh restoral. When you feel you have all of the damage removed, clean all the dust from the surface and inspect carefully for any remaining damage. A light beam held at a 20 degree angle to the window will help show damaged areas that have not been removed. Your sanding pattern will pick up a certain amount of light, but the crazing or scratches will also pick up light and will run at different angles than the scratch pattern. These leftover imperfections will appear as small dots or long lines of crazing that have been opened up, but have not been fully removed by the sanding. During this examination, if you find damage that has not been removed, continue sanding the entire surface, not just the area where you have detected the unremoved damage. Sanding in localized areas to remove the remaining damage will cause distortion when the restoration has been completed. It is very tempting to just sand out what's left and leave the remainder as it is. Remember, this will only cause more trouble in the long run. Sand in a manner which leaves a distinct scratch pattern on the window. Then continue to check for the complete removal of the damage. Use the next finer grit of sandpaper and remove the previous scratch pattern, establishing a new scratch pattern. It is suggested that you use a crossing pattern to the previous step as you continue through the sandpaper series. This allows you to check at the end of each step to make sure the previous scratch pattern has been fully removed and a new one established. Continue alternating scratch patterns until you have finished with 600 grit sandpaper. At this point in your restoral, begin using micro mesh and continue working in a crossing scratch pattern with each step. These micro mesh steps should be done by hand in order to obtain the best results. Craze repair is the most demanding restoral job there is, but to see the process unfold and at the end leave a beautiful window is very rewarding. Distortion is an easily detected visual imperfection. Distortion caused by the formation of highly curved sections is common and should be left alone. Even though objectionable, it is a necessary evil. Two other types, localized and surface distortion, can sometimes be eliminated. Distortion is usually caused by the use of improper restoral methods and materials or through the misforming of curved sections during manufacture. Good lighting is necessary to see distortion, and sunlight is best. If you do not have a grid board, select an object at least 30 feet away. Crossed frames of windows are best, as they will show distortion in any direction. If such windows are not available, any reasonably straight object, such as a tree or a telephone pole, will do. As you can see, the straight lines in this building work very well. If the panel has been removed, hold it at arm's length and move it slowly back and forth and up and down. The object you have chosen should retain its shape and position. It should not curve or break pattern. If the panel is installed, a slow movement of the head will suffice. Localized distortion actually is a blind spot, like looking through a magnifying glass. 
This is caused by uneven damage removal or working one spot with a cream or paste and not being able to blend out the damaged area. If you have such a spot, it will be necessary to use a series of sandpapers to remove material around it and blend the surface. Take care to work across the top of the distortion so as not to make it deeper than it already is. Using a foam block, put a stiff piece of cardboard between the foam block and the abrasive. The cardboard should be at least as thick as that used in a shoebox. Begin working with light pressure until the surface is frosted all around the distortion spot and crossing the area to be worked from all directions in order to blend the spot in. Wipe off the abraded particles and you will now have a clear spot the exact size and shape of the distortion. Using this spot as a reference, continue with the 400 grit sandpaper with water and follow the contour of the window. Keep the work surface flushed and change sandpaper and cardboard as needed to speed the operation. This step in the restoration goes rather slowly because of the lighter pressure being used and could take up to 30 minutes or more. Most distortion is caused by the uneven removal of surface material during rework. If the heaviest damage is located in one or two areas, it is a natural tendency to work them more than the surrounding sections. The result is distortion. It is a mistake you don't make twice. When a vibrator sander is being used, be sure to maintain a constant pressure throughout the work area. If your sander is air powered, it must have sufficient volume and pressure to maintain full speed at all times. An erratic sander will almost certainly produce distortion. After flushing with clean water, use 600 sandpaper on a foam block with no cardboard backing. Sand in the same pattern using water and work a slightly larger area than that worked with the 400. Continue sanding until the 600 pattern is established. From this point on, polish with the MicroMesh series. Wet sanding allows your abrasives to cut quickly and the water takes the abraded particles away from the sanding block so the crystals can cut more effectively. Wet sanding will also make your abrasives last much longer. The final results with wet sanding also tend to be of a higher quality than with dry sanding. Drawbacks to wet sanding include a need to thoroughly dry the work surface after each step. This will ensure that you have totally removed the previous scratch pattern before creating a new one with the next finer micromesh. If the surface is not thoroughly dry, the water remaining on the surface will fill any remaining scratches, making them invisible to the naked eye. After checking the surface to see that the previous scratch pattern has been entirely removed, wet the window with a fresh water source and continue through the micromesh series. For all the positive things that acrylics offer, they do require more care and maintenance than glass. The surface is soft, and coarse towels or airborne abrasive particles can cause surface scratches very easily. Because of these maintenance problems, Microsurface has written an ATEC manual outlining acrylic repair and maintenance techniques for professional aviation mechanics. Proper maintenance is neither difficult nor time-consuming but there are some definite do's and don'ts. Do not use paper towels, synthetic fabrics, or glass cleaners to clean windows. Paper towels and synthetic fabrics scratch, while glass cleaners contain ammonia, which will etch plastic surfaces over a period of time. Be extremely careful when using paint strippers, 
gasoline, and other chemicals or solvents on or around the aircraft. Do not allow these materials to come in contact with any plastic surface. This type of chemical can cause damage immediately or damage which may not show up for months. Do not clean dry acrylic surfaces. When cleaning a transparency, you should first flush the surface several times with clean water to remove dust and dirt. Next, use your bare hand, a wet chamois, or a 100% cotton cloth and lightly rub the surface to dislodge any dust or dirt that may be attached to the surface. Use short strokes and plenty of water to flush away loosened particles. Pay attention to any crevices around the frame as these are excellent spots for collecting particles which may be picked up later and scratch the surface. After the surface has been thoroughly flushed with water, apply a small quantity of microgloss or another approved plastic cleaner to the window and spread an even film over the window with your fingers. Then clean the surface with a soft cloth, 100% cotton flannel or terry cloth. Repeat applications may be required for some types of damage, but any damage that is under the surface or can be felt with a fingernail should be repaired with a micromesh acrylic repair kit. After a thorough cleaning, you should use micromesh anti-static cream or another anti-static product for your window to keep it clean and to prevent static buildup. Remember, keep your work area and work surface clean at all times. each step in its entirety. Always use a crossing pattern when changing grits. Micromesh can be used on any resinous object such as painted surfaces, Poxy finishes, formica, gel coats, and many others. The Micromesh restoral process is the most consistent acrylic restoral process ever to be introduced. All airplanes will be candidates for acrylic restorations many times throughout their useful life. The expansion of fixed-based operator services to include acrylic restorals offers a great profit potential for FBOs. It also allows the customer to save the cost of replacing a window, which can be up to $40,000, not including installation. Microsurface continues to work with aircraft and acrylic manufacturers in the setting of standards for reworked acrylics. And we remain committed to you, the people who uphold those standards. <laughs>